it on the technique, sir? Exhale on the technique. What do you mean? Demonstrate, please. What's your name? Uh, Thomas Hyde, sir. Thanks for volunteering, Thomas. Yes, sir. Three throw, punch throw, block, sir. <laughs> Exhale. Put power on the back. Exhale. Good. Okay, moment. If, uh, if you were to take me and do like a Han Solo, and I wonder when you would go with that movie. Maybe they froze him. Star Wars. Specifically, episode, anyone? Empire, Empire Strikes Back. Bang! They froze him, right? If you were to take me and freeze me like that, and then just let me fall, turn me over and draw a line from my fingertip down to my foot, same thing here. Where the point crosses is called a tangent. The hara or the dantian, depending on what discipline you're studying. And the knot of the belt falls there. Why do we wear the belt? Does it keep the pants up? The knot of the belt is there to remind you to focus on your tangent. Understand? Sure. What is the muscle that causes you to breathe? Diaphragmatic muscle. Where's the diaphragmatic muscle? What curare do? Who knows what curare is? It paralyzes your muscles. It paralyzes. So what happens is that you have a perfectly functioning lung. If I could curare put on a dart and shot at you, you'd be perfectly able to breathe, except your diaphragmatic muscles won't work. So you'd suffocate. So when we breathe, where do we breathe from? Where does a baby breathe from? Abdomen. A baby breathes from the abdomen, but we're breathing up here. Like a tire ran over a nail. Right? We have to try and think about how a baby breathes. We have to push the breathing down to the conduit. Very hard to do. Very hard to do. So right from here, sitting. Make the back straight. And just feel as if your throat is like a vase, a vase coming down very long and thin, like a long stem rose that goes into like the base where all the water sits. So right from here, make your back nice and straight. Breathe in deep down into your tongue and breathe in. Feel your stomach expand with air. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. All right. Now, breathe in. But when you exhale, exhale in a dynamic, sharp motion from the time, like this. Put your hand in your belly and feel the diaphragmatic muscle tighten as you force the air out. Everybody, breathe in. Go. Again, breathe in. Now exhale strong from the tangent, not from the throat. Go. Again, breathe in. Go. Again, breathe in. Go. Breathe in. Go. Now, right from here, all I want you to do is from this position, is come to here. Ready? Come to here. Same thing. Breathe in. Exhale from there. Go. Again, breathe in. Exhale from there. Go. Now, bring your left hand up. Frame for a low block. Breathe in. Now, as you do the low block, breathe from the center. Go. Again, breathe in. Breathe in. Go. Now, we're going to take a big step. Lift up your left knee. Ready. Breathe in. Again, breathe in. Go. Okay, standing up. Frame. Breathe in. Where's the breathing coming from? Diaphragmatic muscle, sir. A diaphragmatic muscle, <laughs> conjure. Now right in place. Go. Again, breathe in. Go. Breathe in. Now step with your left foot and block. Go. You're not blowing up bloom. What would you think if you saw me walking down the street doing this? together in frame. One, no expression, no tightening, no breath in the mouth, just here, and go. Again, ready, frame. 
When I make a low block frame, notice how my elbows are close. Because I can't get my foot in there. Elbows close. And breathe. Go. From the diaphragm, right? Let's try it again. Frame. And block. Go. Good. Bring it back. Many different types of breath, but the two primary breaths we need to think of is Wego or Wegaru and Negaru. Wegaru is external style. Wegaru, way like world. Okay? Negaru is inside style. Okay? Wega, ka, ka, like kasa, kasa. Wega. Uh, outside. Techniques that you do outside of the house, in a field. Negaru, inside the house. Okay? Inside house style. Okay. Outside the house style, not outside house, not like an outhouse. Outside the house, techniques you would do outside, the parking lot, you jump, you hop. External form. They deal a lot with muscle power, dynamic, snapping power. Negaru, like Nahanji, deals with internal power. When you do Negaru breathing, or when you do Wegaru breathing, or Wegaru breathing, the breathing is only at the moment of completion. Okay, so from here. But when I do external breathing, there's no breath in the motion. But when I do internal breathing, negaru breathing, it's this. Like if I'm doing my hanji, right? Now what happens is that sometimes people don't understand this, so they do my hanji with the same breath as basai. All you're doing is you're doing Naihanji form external. So, Chumbi. Let's all do Gicho Yang Ilbu for a minute. Everyone say Gicho. 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 Yang. 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 Ilbu. 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 It's an external form. Breathe in. Now remember, let's just exhale. <coughs> Breathe in. Put your hands in the tangent. Start to tighten up that muscle. Just tighten and relax. Tighten it. Can you feel it? Tighten and relax. Tighten and relax. Now as you exhale, make sure your breath stays there, not here. Now from here. Exhale from the times and ready. Lock. Huh? The breath is only at the moment of impact. Raise the hand. Inhale. When you punch, you exhale at the moment of impact. Huh? Good. Right hand high. Spin, low block, exhale, go. Punch. Good chubby. External breathing, understand? Sure. Sure. Okay. External breathing. Now, in my hands, you breathe through the motion. So, if I were to do teach your hand a little bit from an internal point of view, it would be like this. See the difference? Sure. Sure. You're breathing through the technique. So look to the left, frame. Step out, low block, breathe through the technique. Come out. Good. Step, punch through the technique. Cool. Right shoulder through the technique. Set. Punch. Next. Should be. Does that make sense? Sure. Sure. Like that. In 10 minutes or 5 minutes. Is the basic PowerPoint difference between the two breathing. Any questions? Okay, we're going to work on Basai So. Sure. Basai So. We're going to teach you a new form. Uh, I could spend hours on this, but I won't. All right? Um, there's some different variations or different interpretations of this, but we're going to have fun with it. Basai means to storm the castle, doesn't it? Sure. So, basai so means to storm the castle and capture the enemy. Storm the castle, capture the enemy. Some styles will teach this afterwards. Some will teach it before. What do we say the castle is in Basai? Anyone? Body. No. The ego. We get a red belt, getting ready for black belt. Ego is the main 
thing. The big difference between a red belt and a black belt has to be the ego. So to get the black belt, don't we have to kind of humble ourselves a little bit? Sure. sure. Ego. That's the ego, the pride. Understand? So, storm the castle, capture the enemy. Ha! -ha! Now from here, the left hand, keep the contact. The left hand is going to come over. And they come in from here. Ha! -ha! drops, my left hand drops, my right hand comes high, my left hand comes low, I breathe through the technique, which is what type of breath? This, this style has nangong and weigong in it, both. Alright, then I, so right from here, my right foot comes around, my right hand goes counterclockwise, does a reverse spin to here. Ha-na! So let's try it again. From here, I turn counterclockwise, I turn my back, hand comes down, one, two. Ha-na! Again, from here, spin over the right shoulder. Ha-na! Time is up. Again, one more time. Ready? Go. Good. Time is up. Hand is closed. Feet together. One more time. One last time. Watch me here. My feet come together. Hana! All right. I step out with my left foot. Hana! You're going to pull back from here. Left palm is down. Both palms are down. Ready? Hana! Okay. Good. Show me. Let's try it again. So, off the knife. So, storm the castle, capture the enemy. If we said that the ego was the castle, what is within the ego? What would be in the keep of the castle? What's the cause of the ego? Right? Right. Right. <laughs> Pride comes before the fall, that's what the scripture says. So we gotta work with our pride. Hana! Breathe through this motion. Hana! Good, breathe through this motion. Tool! Look over the right shoulder. External breath. Hana! Good. hand strike. From here you're going to make a side kick. Rich hand strike. Strike. Double punch. Come on. So let's try it again from here. Make a side kick. Rich hand. Double punch. Come on. I like this form is because most of the pseudos in Kung Sudo are here. But this form here, we get a chance to do some of the Japanese offensive style. Where we don't see too much in Kung Sudo. So this form allows us to recapture some of that. I hop forward slightly with my left foot. Ha! Again. We don't cross. It's left, right. Slides up. Hana. Good. Again, watch my right foot comes underneath and crosses. Hana. Good. All right. Shuffle back. If if I could use this end of the room as extreme.
Extreme Yang. Extreme Yang. Breathing at the tension at the end of the motion. And only breathing while the motion goes out. Understand? Sure. There's a point where it becomes negong, where I breathe through the technique. I'm right here. I'm breathing through the motion, and there's tension at the moment of impact. Understand? Sir. Sure. But way over here, there's another type of breath. And then there's another breath over there. This is Tai Chi type of breath, where there's no muscular tension. Somewhere in between here, we come in here like this. Am I tensing the muscles here? No, sir. No. Am I breathing through the motion? Yes, yes sir. So my breath is yin and my body is yin. There's no tension in the muscle, so that's yin yin. Like you just thought you think I'm going to be a yin yang. I know. <laughs> this breathing is yin because you breathe through the motion, but you tense at the end. I'm sorry, now, if I were to come in here, it starts yin and it's yang, breathing through the motion. So within, if this is the dividing line, if this is the way home breathing, the breathing is dynamic, there's tension at the end of the muscle, the end of the technique, and you only breathe at the moment of impact. Understand? Sure. I come to the dividing line, bang, now I'm on the yin side. I'm breathing through the motion. The breath starts and then continues with tension in the conduit. The diaphragm, that's what we're talking about, not in the muscle. We're talking about the, the diaphragmatic muscle tensing. If I come over here, the diaphragmatic muscle does not tense. There is no contraction at the end. Understand? Sure. And then we can go further on that side, but that's not tonight. Those are the three main things we want to see in this form. Yin yin. Yin yang, but on the other side, very similar. And then yang. To use a political example, very, very conservative Republican. <laughs> Liberal, Republican, conservative, Democrat. This motion here and this motion here is very similar, isn't it? Yes, sir. Then you get over here, liberal, Democrat. I hate to use the political, but it illustrates it. How towards the close line, you can have one from one party that feels very similar, but on the extremes it's very different. So come here. Then we can go over into here where you see Chinese motion, which is still very internal, but very different. So, let's hop sir, up. Sir, sir, sir. All right. I asked me to write this all down. <laughs> to be. So from here, watch. We'll call the dynamic breathing here red. When I exhale and only exhale at the moment of impact, we'll call that red breathing. If I breathe through the motion and exhale at the end, we'll call that pink. If I come breathing with no diaphragmatic tension, we'll call that blue. You with me? Sir. Sure. Yeah. Opening motion. What color? Blue. Blue. What color? Pink. Pink. What color? Blue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's try it right from here. Ready? Last side. Should be. Hana. Huh. 
sometimes you'll see slight variations in the breathing too. This is right on top. Sometimes you'll see variations. You know, the subtle things like, isn't it really subtle the difference between the pink and the red breathing? So one instructor could do it one way and one could do the other. Hands are like this. Touching. Thank you, touch. So you might see someone else doing it slightly different. It's just it's too hard to get everybody in the world to do this exactly the same. So let's go on. Breathe through. Tighten the diaphragmatic muscle at the moment of impact. Hana! Look to the left. No tightening the diaphragmatic muscle. Pull. Looking over your right shoulder. No tightening of the diaphragmatic muscle until the moment of impact. Hana! No tightening, but a continual breathing. Hana! The diaphragmatic muscle will now tighten, but only at the moment of impact. Alright, you can do this either way. Let's do it only at the moment of impact. One. Two. From here. Breathing through. This is pink. This is pink. Hup. Hup. Shuffle back. Hup. Pink. Hup. Blue. Hup. Now you pull both hands to the side of the body, just like this. As you do this, you do a yup chagi. So from here. shoulder spin. So from here, my left foot draws my movement. Akeem Abjase back st uh, horse stance to a back stance. Hana! Again, I'm on a 45. Kind of like Pyongyang Shodan. 
From here, I look to the left. On the 45, not all the way behind me, but right from here. You key up on the end. with tension at the end. I'm sorry, that's red because we're key -opping. I apologize. I look to the left. And then the right foot comes in because it's the last foot. That step. Good. And show. Question. Sir. Okay, move back. Sir. Catches here. This is a variation on what kind of lock? Z bar technique. Z technique, right? This is Z technique. So the Z technique I like. Bang. Understand? Sir. Watch it again. He grabs. I create counter motion. The reason why I want it now, you can also do this technique pink when you're applying it. Tongue slow is dynamic when you strike. Did you ever grapple? What type of breathing do you do in grappling? Any, any way you can. Oh, I <laughs> you got pink, blue, 
Grab and then grappling breathing. That you are pushing muscle on muscle. It is breathing through the motion. I catch this hand here, so he comes in here. <sighs> so from here he grabs here. He's up. He grabs. I come in through here. Arm bar tap. Can you feel it? Up. Right. Next technique. This comes here. I have this here. I just come here. Bang. Then another per another attacker comes out. You get another attacker from now. You grab. I come in here, one, and then I step in through here. Okay, good. We're just going to try this first technique. Get with a partner in, do Z technique one, and then this two. All I want you to do is go Z, and then turn arm bar right there. Let's try it for so a minute or so. Z in an arm bar, Z in an arm bar. Cobra. <laughs> they should all get that one. <laughs> he is not an easy person to photograph. He's. Cuts it. Cuts it. The pressure. The pressure. He he was doing it that way too. Right. But when he did it slow, he had his hand up. Just like it. He stepped in and then stepped back to throw him. I worked 
real close to the Army base. So I know a lot of guys, what they tell you, by the time they get there, it takes a week or two to get in process and get to their school. And the last week, then a lot of times they're busy. So they don't necessarily get that much training in the year. They might go for excuse me, four or five times a week, but there's a couple times we're out in the field. The point being is that they can only teach so much to people in a year, right? So Wongi produced a book, and he said he was going to produce volumes two, three, and four. And in there, he was going to talk about the other forms. Well, as time went on, he started teaching the Chilsung forms and the Yupro forms which came from the Subak Do style. So a lot of these forms weren't taught, but they're still being practiced by the Japanese. Now my style is Tang Sudo, not Subak Do. I still practice the Chilsung and the Yupro forms, but I do that and I teach some of them. But those forms are not really Tang Sudo, they're Subak Do. So if we want to practice Tang Sudo, let's practice Tang Sudo. If we want to practice Subak Do, that's fine, but call it Subak Do. Subak Do are your Chilsung forms, your Yupro forms. Tang Sudo is the style that's primarily indigenous in Okinawa. And in there is a list of forms. And what I'm doing is finding Japanese masters and Korean masters that know these forms. And I've been slowly learning them over the last five or six years and slowly incorporating them into our style. So this is Basai So. Two groups, masters over here, and everyone else over here. Sir. Sir. Thirty second breather. Sir. Sir. A motion to breathe is very Now, watch my hands. Am 
minus straight line one. See how this hand is about head height? Ready? Huh? Now when I turn, I have to get this hand directly behind me. No, no. See this hand? Right behind me. So again from here. See where that hand is? When you make this strike, it has to come exactly there. I'm not looking, but I know that hand is exactly in the same place, isn't it? Now watch my left hand. It's going to exactly replace my right hand, isn't it? Same time. So the first back fist, and then the second back fist, and the third back fist all land in the same X, Y, Z, alpha, beta, gamma spot in the world. So again, the counterclockwise motion. Good. Let's, uh, let's face the... Uh, Let's face this way. Okay, so this way here. One. Ready? Now you can look at me in the mirror. Ready? One. Up. See where your right hand is? Now when you turn, your left hand goes there. Hana. I keep with the with the pseudo so hand. Up. Punch band, so you gotta keep that back leg. One, two, three. Now this hand is going to come right from here as if it's coming straight up and over. What's good about this form is this the shoulders. So if we practice this form, it's good for our shoulders. So right from here, this hand is going to come straight up. Straight up. Ready? Side to count. Five side, two deep. Go. And again. And down. As you're pushing your, as you're exhaling, you're pushing your hands down. And your right knee is straight. So let's try it. Straight your left leg is sliding down. Try to tie Thank you, Mark. Nice, calm, easy breath. Hana, easy technique. No power from how we know. It's a totally different dimension to our Kung Fu. Good. Gotta get that hand in the same quarter. That's gonna take a while. Now bring it straight up and inhale. Now no power, no tension. Good. Now the hands open up. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Should be. Can you grab one of those pads and move past for me? Together. From here, are you want to modify? Yeah, well, no, I'm, gonna, when you, when you I'm in here. Can't be, can't Front handle. stance. Ready? You so. slightly can adjust this foot. So from here, one, slightly adjust that foot. Can you hold that tight for me, tight against your body? Good, bring this here. Good, got it tight? Relax, power. Okay? I'm not exhaling. I'm not pushing hard. Okay, you come on over here. Come around. That's why I didn't switch from here. Hold my wrist. Two hands. So I can just, you know, supporting it. Just like that. Okay. Feel any power? Any tension? Feel any tension there? The idea is that, tell me if there's any tension at any time in these techniques. Did you feel power? Did you feel any tension? Watch it again. Okay? So, when we're in this, this is what, there's no tension. Did you hear any breath? Go back here. No tension, no breath. Use your hand. Throw that, that, that back hand. No tension, no breath. Right around. Ready? Hold on. No tension, no breath. Good. No audible breath. No audible breath, that is. Okay? Side kick. Left, right, left. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Draw the left hand back. Strong exhale now. Okay, this is here. Here. Come on over here for a minute. Okay. Reach in and grab with your right, with your left hand. Reach in the grab. Come here. Come here. Right? So when I step to here. Okay, again, he grabs. He grabs. I just step to here like this. One and two. So from here. Two. Arm comes around. Inhale. Very quiet. 
quietly. Exhale Ooh. very quietly. Hands open up. Inhale one. Exhale. Left hand pulls back. You're going to kick with the instep. One. Then frame. Left foot step. One. Two. Right hand comes over the top. Inhale. Exhale. I'm sorry. And a second. Right foot comes back. Side block. Four stance punch. Side block. Okay, shuffle back a little bit. Shuffle back a little bit. Four stance punch one. Over here. Yeah. Pack low block. Yeah. Low block one. Double stack. Punch key out. Good. One, two, three. You. You exhale as you're punching. This form is totally internal. So you are not allowed to. You must breathe through the motion and exhale. Did you feel power? But I'm not just making right physical tensions. Power is transferred differently. Left foot. Power is transferred differently in this technique. Exhale. This is what the beginning of the. Can we have a scalp and go to the. When you finish that form, ask the gal to bring it back to Chumbi, okay? Yes, sir. When you finish that form. Okay, Chumbi. Both hands come down. Touch. Come on. Side kick. Left two, though. Over the top. Try not to go on an angle. Try to come straight up. Which is tough on the shoulder, but that's the whole thing. Inhale. Left foot. Exhale. Very easy. Inhale. Exhale. This is the only strong press at this point. Hold on. Stance, one, half low block. 
Roll block, punch key out. Ball, internal. One, two, and punch key out. Shuffle back. Go right, so let's try it. Side block. Come out. Horse and punch. 
design block. Run on. One, two, touch. Four stance punch. Breathe. Run on. Sir, ma'am. Question? No, nope. She asked if I.
the whole idea of your type just coming this way. Inhale. Exhale. Side 
kick, double strike. One, sir, sir. Let's let's try, let's try it again. Pull the right hand back. Exhale. Turn the foot here. Straight line again. So you're going to hit on the instep. One, then one, two, over the top. One, two, left foot comes back, side block. One, horse hands punch, side block. That's the only difference. I know that you guys are going.
decided to go. When I was down there, I wanted to work with the Special Forces, the Green Berets. And we have a Hollywood idea of what the Green Berets are all about. And through a church I was going to, I got a chance to meet some of the Green Berets, and they had me come up and train. And the first time I showed up, I was in a room like this with my uniform on, trying to teach them Kung Sudo, but trying to do a lot of form application. They didn't want to do the block. They just wanted to do the killing. <laughs> so over a period of time, I was trying to find my niche. And I realized, I said, well, how much knife fighting do you guys have? And they said, none. So, All right, cool. I've been studying our niche for a while. I'm a certified our niece instructor. And the military likes to do things with acronyms. Acronyms are the letters that mean something. So I came up with cut close-up technique. I thought it was pretty cool. And I was going to take a picture of a shark, hand drawn, and cut out and cut out the letter C U T, and the T would be like a little part of the knife, you know, the, the, the scabbard, you know what I mean? I was going to do something like that, real cool with cut, knife, shark, you know, something like that. I came up with a phrase, or someone else came up with it, but I kind of stole it. It was winners drift, losers bleed, you know, knife fighting, really cool. So I started teaching the knife fighting to the soldiers, and they really liked that. So you threw up in with a knife, right? and I came in here, and I was showing them wrist lock, they go, could you do that again? What? The wrist lock. You don't know the basic wrist lock? No. I do. You gotta watch Hollywood movies. You guys know all this stuff. Some of them do and some of them don't. So I started trying to teach them all of these other wrist locks and I realized I had to come up with a whole other portion of the course for all the empty hand stuff. And I was like, oh man, I came up with that acronym cut. It was so cool. What am I gonna come up with that, that's gonna be close to cut? So I looked at the word combat and I looked at everything and then I was looking at the word fight. And God was with me that day. Because I came up with fully integrated grappling and hitting techniques. <laughs> and I said, man, it's getting deep around here. And I said, deep. Ah, developing and equipping essential personnel. So my instructor course is called Deep. That's my own little personal joke. Because when I came up with fight and cut, I was like, man, put on the boots because it's getting deep around here. <laughs> So I teach fight and cut, which is fully integrated grappling and hitting techniques and close-up techniques, and the Army loves it. Combatives.net, if you haven't seen it, the, the advertise of the uh, website. And I created a manual, and I would like to present the manual to Amasta Bogdansky. And this gentleman here, Joe Fraley, he fought Dan the Beast Severn. All right, I don't know if you've ever heard of Dan the Beast Severn. He's one of the toughest guys I've had the honor of training with, but he's one of the most mellowest Christians you'll ever meet. He is just like outside, he is just he's six three or six four, very calm. But when we really started looking at the Brazilian techniques and incorporating it in, because I have a lot of experience in Japanese jujitsu, we started working. And he didn't really challenge me. He just said, you know, a lot of those kicks won't necessarily work because someone can get underneath them. Now, one of the things I pride, notice the word pride myself on, is the speed of my round kick. So I said, okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to kick you. Let's see what you do. And I threw that round kick. And before my foot was anywhere, he was on the ground. He shot in like a darn snake. And before I knew it, he caught my leg and had me on the ground. And it was on Mount Pop choking me out. Like that. I want to learn that. That was cool. We'll do it again. And this time I said to myself, I'm kicking him this time. I'm kicking him. So I decided to go faster. Well, he decided to go faster. And I couldn't kick him. He studied some point sparring with me for fun. I started some studying some grappling from him. And so uh, I'll leave this to Master Bogdansky as an appreciation for having us in today. And it just goes through, this is a, Colonel Ed Reeder. These guys just got back from Afghanistan. Uh, please pray for our troops. Please pray for our troops. A lot is happening. I can tell you that a lot is happening. It doesn't make the papers. A lot of stuff is going down. There's a lot of troops going over there now. I don't know how you feel politically one way or the other. You don't have to be in favor of the war or not in favor or not to know that there's Americans and humans over there. So let's pray for them. This is a very good friend of mine, Lonnie Blevins. And uh, then it goes through various knife fighting techniques. 
And I do knife fighting a little different from the typical uh, fender wrist and whatnot. I use a lot of Filipino, and the idea is that I attack the wrist, because if I sever the tendons and ligaments in your wrist, you can't hold a knife. And uh, I didn't come up with this advertisement, but a guy I hired to help me put together a yellow advertise, a yellow page advertisement came up with a catchphrase. Fight and cut combatives. We're killing isn't just educational, it's fun. <laughs> Well, somebody clipped that out. I just found this out. They sent it off to Jay Leno. Jay Leno on Monday night does headlines, and that advertisement and that phrase was on the Jay Leno show. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get a copy of it, because I just can't imagine Jay Leno with an advertisement of me with a knife. Going, am telling you, isn't this any case of fun? <laughs> it's just, I have to get a copy of that. I can't wait. So this is a knife fighting into here, and then some basic strikes. And the reason why I tell you not to punch is because of, come on, I have a minute. Can you get on your back here? If I'm in what's called the mount top position, right? Relax, I'm not going to hit you. And as I punch, he moves his head this way, and I hit concrete and his elbow locks. What's going to happen to my hand? Now, do you guys know how to do mount post? Drive your hips up. Drive your hips up. No, no. Uh, your hips. Lift your hips. See, if he lifts his hips, this brings me forward. So as I go to punch, he lifts his hips. What's going to happen when I hit that ground? More force. So what I want to do is never as so much as punch, but palm. So when he drives his hips up, if I hit the palm, that elbow will give. Or I just hit with the elbow. So we never punch. So you'll see in the manual, thank you. There's no punching. There's too many people up, will break their hands, and that's not good. No punching. Striking, and then from here to the wrist lock, and then a ground fight. So I just wanted to uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Two Kicho Hyung I make a low block, then a high block, a high block, a high block, and then a turn low block. Let's go from here. Come over to top strike. High block, low block. Understand? Again, from here, he comes over to strike. High block, I come in through here. What do I have here? A low block. So when I do this motion here, one, two, 
if I look at those two motions, there's a throw there. You see, Americans want to compartmentalize everything. This is a strike, this is a block, this is a throw. But what do you think? A couple hundred years ago, they had throwing arts. And they, they studied it. They had different aspects, but all the arts were all intertwined at one point. You couldn't just have throwing in this. Because in a fight, you're going to throw. In a fight, it's going to go to the ground. In a fight, someone's going to pull out a knife. Wait a minute. This isn't fair. You have a knife, I don't. Put the knife away before I get hurt. It's not going to work like that. So, there is no written source. I've looked everywhere, and I've looked at a lot of Thomas Hill textbooks, and I see, uh, <clears throat> I see when a new book comes out, it's just the same thing as something else with a different person doing the news. So, I'm trying to find sources for Korean interpretation of forms. I have not been able to find one. If you find one, let me know. Sure. But I am currently working on one. I, I love doing this. It makes it fun for me. You know, the idea of coming in from here and seeing a guillotine choke and Chang on Sandan. You know, if you can start to see these movements and start to work on them, then when you're doing the forms, they're not just, oh, another form. I'm choking somebody. Here. I'm giving a guy a heart attack here. All right? I'm off in another world. Your brother's over here. I remember an opponent's always three things. Bigger, stronger, and what's the third one? <laughs> Uglier. <laughs> Britney Spears with a hatchet is ugly. So I don't care who's coming at me here. I'm giving that guy a heart attack. Boom, one, and then two. All right? When I'm doing this movement, once you start learning the movement, I'm in combat in my mind. I'm snapping the wrist here. Given my arm bar here, I'm going through the motions. Now there's times where I'm working on my breathing. There's times I'm working on my hip. There's times I'm working on my hand placement. There's times I'm doing the form I'm working on bunkai, practical act application. So I'm working on different things as I'm doing the form. Outward, if you're watching me, it all looks the same. But inward, in my mind, I have my conscious mind directed somewhere. It might be on dropping my, my diaphragmatic breathing, dropping the tension, lowering the breath. It might be just the right hand. Whatever I do, the whole time, I'm only consciously aware of my right hand, or my right foot, or my hip motion. Do the form again. Now let's just concentrate on the left knee the whole time. Just feel what that left knee is doing. How's the weight being transferred there? And you just do the form again and again. I learned this concept when I was a kid. My mom used to play classical music, and she said, pick out an instrument. You might just pick out one instrument. The whole song, you just listen to that instrument. Okay, let's listen to the same piece of music again this time. Listen to the, just the percussion. Listen to Beethoven's fifth. Only the percussion. All right, come on back. Now let's just listen for the cello. Okay, come on back. Now, put it all together. Now listen for nothing. You know, and you listen to the same piece of music over and over. It's hitting on your drums. Go through and just pick one thing. And go back and do it again and do it another. And do it another. And what happens is that... When you are consciously thinking of something when you're doing your form, that's conscious. But the forms have to reach a, a deeper level, a second level, called second nature. See, you're born, before you're born is first nature. Once you're born, everything you learn after you're born is second nature. Now, I know a lot about babies. Trust me. All right? Did you know that if you have a baby on a bed and you throw a basketball at them, they don't blink? <laughs> no, <that's good. laughs> What I'm trying to say is that a blink is not an instinct. Instinct is what you're born with. Blinking is a reflex that's taught. The baby has to, if you throw a towel, if you put a towel or something at a baby's face, it, does, it just watches it. Then it learns to blink. Okay? If you take a child and throw a ball to them, they'll just watch it bounce off their face. After a couple times, their hands will come up. Try it. Go home. <laughs> Just kidding. It's what you learn afterwards that becomes second nature. So if you have to think while you're moving, you're not at that point yet. Now, because you're wearing black belt, that means that you have reached second nature in the basics of Tony Sudo. That's all it means, is that you will, not instinctually, instinctually is what you're born with, but reflex. Someone throws something. How many of you have ever seen that? Someone threw something to you and you caught it, or something fell off the table and you caught it before it hit the floor, and you say, oh, that's pretty cool. Right? How many of you have done that? And you caught yourself doing something without thinking. 
You can't sit there and say, oh, the glass is falling off the table. What should I do? It's got to be reflex. And my judo instructor, Osente Phil Porter, says there was a study done. And they just took one move. And they brought this guy one move and recorded every time he did it. They wanted to see how long it would take before it became a reflex. And they said around 5,000 repetitions of yours. 5,000. They just let him do one move all day long, every time he practiced it. If he did it set to 25, wrote down 25. And then one day he was sparring. And you know what happened? Wham! And he said, what happened? He goes, I don't know. I, I don't know. It became a reflex. He just did it without thinking. A reflex is responding without thinking consciously. Automatic response. You're driving down the road, a kid runs out in front. What should I do? Your foot automatically goes to the brake. You got the basketball, you see the opening, you shoot automatically. I don't. I don't do basketball very well. But those of you that do, you see the opening, it's an inch, it's, it's not an inch, it's a reflex. It has to become a reflex. Okay, so form application to bring it back has to become a reflex. You have to do that technique over and over and over again. So that way there, if someone does kick on you, it becomes a reflex. Any other questions? Good question. Ask now with the chance. <clears throat> How many people think that they got ten times more in the second round than you originally thought? I knew what I was going to get, but I'm not making it. <laughs> ten times, right? You know, and so if you went to Master's Pro Seminar on a, uh, a big level, you'd probably pay, you know, we've been to seminars, you pay $500 for, all, for an eight-hour seminar. And you guys got it you're very expensively, and we wanted to compensate him somehow, but also by showing our appreciation and affection for him, because he took his time to come up here from down south and took a night out. He didn't have to do this. You know, he does it because we're friends. And he does it because of family, because of your you're my student, and you, this is your teacher too. Right? It's like he told me much throughout, he told me more about Thomas Chido in the last four years than I learned in 20 years. Because you know, his depth of knowledge is fantastic. And you know we only bring people here? Gentlemen. Right? People of high character. He's one of the first of the highest character I could ever meet and bring here. You know, so he, he deserves more accolades than we could even bestow upon him. You know, it's not to you know, flatter or anything, but I'm telling you, when he comes and I sit more with him, you uplift my spirit. Because he's a spiritual kind of guy. You know, I feel uplifted. I talked to him on the phone. I was so excited. I couldn't wait till him to come tonight. You know, oh, man, how are we going to get up here? You know, he's such a great person. You know, he, we are so fortunate to be able to have him and Master Gavin come. You know, and you know, you've seen him doing it for a long time, but he's... He's a great depth of knowledge. He's sincere, you know, hardworking martial artist. He, he, he loves martial arts. He loves teaching martial arts. So we're very, very lucky to have him come down. There's another big turnout, you know, but, you know, it's, it, you guys got, you know, I'm sure you, you know, he's saw you more in, a, in the last three hours than, you know, about, you know, the depth of knowledge. It's far greater than than mine. And I would be the first one to admit it. And we're lucky to have him come. And we're very appreciative. And thank you so much, sir. My pleasure. Let me just say this. One of the things that impresses me about Master Bogdanski and Master Charlotte, but is their desire to want to really, you know, a lot of times people get to a high level of martial arts, and, and that's it. They don't want to want, they just want to stick to what they know. And Master Bogdanski, I'm, I'm honored to be here. He's my senior. You understand what I mean? So the fact that, that my senior in, in the martial arts wants, Mr. Hope's still here? He left. He left. Oh, sir. wants to continue to learn. They really, to me, a true master is a white belt at heart. You know what you are when you're a white belt? You walk into a school, what do you know? Truly, less than you even think you know. So as I said, Master Bogdanski is my senior, so I know his heart's hungry. My heart's hungry. Master Charlotte's heart, like a white belt. Stay as a white belt. Don't think you know it. As soon as you think you know it, pride sneaks in. As soon as pride sneaks in, you don't learn because as soon as you can, as I was talking with the masters, as soon as you can begin to really kill that pride, and it, I haven't done it yet, and it, you'll never do it. That pride is like a darn weed. You get it down, and then you, hey, I don't need pride. That pride. I, I'm feeling pretty good in this pride thing. That's pride. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't really thought proud thoughts in a while. That's pride. The, 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 the paradox of pride. Remind yourself, I don't know. Because learning is like an inverted, like a V. This is what you know down here, and that's how much there is to know. Remember that. When you first start training, 
the, the space between the two lines is very small. So as a white belt, there's not much to learn. There's not much to learn to be a white belt, to be an orange belt, huh? Boom, you become an orange belt. It's a little wider, but still, not much to learn. You become a green belt. Still a little wider, but you can still get from A to B. Red belt, even more. But then one day you look up and you say, how much is there to learn? And you look at how much there is to learn, and then you look down at how much you learn, and you realize that if all the knowledge in the world could be represented by all the grains of sand in the world, you know what, how much you learn? One grain. One grain of sand. And when you start to realize that, then you stay hungry. How much is there to learn about hunger? How much is there to learn about life? How much is there to learn about humility? How much is there to learn about love? How much is there to learn about concern for each other? And then Kung Sudo takes on a greater meaning. I'm not here to teach you about Kung Sudo. That's the least thing on my mind. I'm here to try and share my passion for the martial arts and the learning. It's, it's just to, you know, to, to get us as Master Bakke, as he said, I get on the phone with him and, man, I hang up the phone and it's nothing fun. I'm feeling great. Good. I like to surround myself around people like that because there's a lot of battery chargers out there. I need to jump, man. I need to jump, man. I need, you know, their hands are like lobster claws. On either side of your ear, give me a jump, man, and charge me. you got to be the charger. you got to be the one that charges others. The only way you do that is to charge yourself. And whenever you're not sure, just look up, raise your hands like this, and look at how much more there is to learn. And look at how little you actually learn. Don't get get bummed about how much you don't know, get excited about how much there is left to learn. And then, you know, no matter how much you learn, you know, there's more. You know, I, I, I joke about it. I could run my whole school on Kichu Yonobu. Dave's Kichu Yonobu school. Just Kichu Yonobu. Guess what we're going to do tonight, guys? I went and said that to a clinic once. I had a bunch of people from that. I, I'll, I'll wrap it up right now. But I said, guess what we're going to do tonight, guys? They go, what? They go, Roblox. Roblox. That boy's serious, isn't he? <laughs> We're gonna low block all night. Oh, uh, can I have a refund? <laughs> and we did low block. I said, listen now, we're gonna do low block and we're gonna do middle punch. And this is the truth, I did this. I said, we're gonna do the turn, the low block, and the punch. And if time allows, guys, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna do this low block. I don't know if we're gonna get to it. And I spent three hours on four moves in form one. And at the end, I said, guys, next week we're gonna do form two. What do you think? And everybody cheered. <laughs> There's so much in low block. I could spend three hours on low block. I have spent three hours on low block. <laughs> and still, there was more. So I could run a whole darn style, just Dave's each way I'm able to come to those schools. And someday we might get to form two in about ten years from now. So stay home, guys.